All right, what's up guys? Jerry Campisi back at the track for another installment. Today, we're gonna to be talking about running form. So, um, <clears throat> before we really get into it, what we're gonna cover is what is correct sprint running form, okay? How to do it correctly, and then I'm gonna show you some drills that help reinforce what we're talking about. And then we're gonna finish off with some striders that kind of ties it all together, okay? So if you're an athlete that plays any sport that involves running, learning how to run correctly is gonna help you stay injury free, it's gonna help you run faster, and it's gonna allow you to perform at a higher level for longer because you're gonna be using your muscles correctly and you're gonna put your body in positions of power instead of positions that um, can cause injury and not allow you to use your power and generate speed correctly and all that kind of stuff. So, um, as always, the full workout will be in the description below. If you want to learn how to run correctly and then get my kind of take on things, stick around. This is one you're not going to want to miss. So the first thing we want to talk about today is what is proper sprint running form, okay? And you got to be careful when you use these terms because there's different parts of races. So obviously the first couple steps out of the block are going to look different than your drive phase, than your transition phase. A floating phase is going to look different than a top speed phase. When you get tired, things start to break down. So um, I'm going to talk about what correct running form is. but you got to take all this stuff with a grain of salt because one different people have different running forms everybody's bodies aren't put together perfectly in order to be in these perfect positions okay if you look at michael johnson's running form he used to sit back he didn't use his arms enough he was like angled back like this his his legs didn't come up high enough but he's one of the fastest men that well he is the fastest man to ever run the 400 meter dash okay so um you know me personally my running form is not perfect i've seen you guys critiquing it in the in the comments below which is fine um I'm just trying to help you guys understand stuff and understand things that helped me run my fastest races, okay? So, um, you know, even Usain Bolt, he's swinging side to side, he doesn't get his knees up high enough, he overstrides it a little bit, and he's the fastest man to ever live. So, um, you know, running form is something you try your best to do the perfect form, but nobody's going to have perfect form, it's just not going to happen, okay? So, what is running form? What are we looking for when we're running, okay? A couple of things. Number one, arms. You want to have relaxed shoulders when you're running. You want your arms to stay at 90 degrees because we want them to just be swinging forward and backwards, okay? All your power generated from your arms is going to come from your chest and your shoulders, okay? This kind of stuff is not helping you run faster. And even I see a lot of times when sprinters' arms come back and then they open up, that's all wasted energy. It should just be going forward and backwards, okay? <clears throat> the other thing is your shoulders need to stay relaxed when you're running. People have a tendency to kind of get up to here like this. In general, whatever your arms do, your legs kind of follow, okay? So like when you get tired, that's why when you hear people say, go to your arms, if your legs are starting to kind of cramp up, if you go to your arms and start getting your arms nice and big, it'll help pick your knees back up and help you continue to run with good form. So we don't want our shoulders up like this. We want our shoulders relaxed, okay? And that's what we want right here. Just going forward and backwards. And the whole thing, the neck's relaxed, your face is relaxed. If you see video of me when I'm sprinting and other like world-class good sprinters, it looks hilarious in slow motion because they're just like and their jaws are just bouncing all over the place. We don't care about how we look. We care about how we finish and how we run, okay? So that's kind of upper body mechanics. You want to also, um, a very common mistake I see is people sinking their hips when they run, okay? And we're gonna do these drills and talk about how to not do that. So we want our hips up tall, we want our shoulders relaxed, we want our arms at 90 degrees pumping back and forth like this and a nice big relaxed face, okay? That's what the upper body is doing. What the lower body is doing is, <clears throat> okay, this is a perfect scenario I'm explaining. We want our foot always dorsiflexed. So what that means is it's always pointed up. We never want our foot like this, our toe like this, because it's gonna cause our, our foot to land in front of us and then it's gonna have to bounce like collapse all the way down to where you get a position of power to push back off again, okay? What we want is we want our, our foot flexed. We want our knee to come up to about 90 degrees. Usually it won't come up quite that far. It'll be about here. And then what we want is we want our leg to come underneath us and land underneath us. And that's where our position of power is, okay? We want, you obviously you're gonna have a little bit of a back kick. Everyone's gonna have a little bit of a back kick. But we want that to be as minimal as possible because what we wanna do is we wanna get our leg back up into a position here so that we can continue to keep running, okay? And so if we're landing here, that's what we want, and we want a little as short of a heel recovery as possible. 
to get it back up into a running position, okay? It should look like a circle, like this, when we're, when we're running, okay? Now obviously when you're running and you're running faster and stuff like that, you're gonna get a little bit of a back kick. That's fine, as long as it's not causing your hips to sink, okay? And uh, the more your legs are behind you back here, the more tendency, that if you have hamstring problems, um, if you're tearing hamstrings, or they're always tight, stuff like that, you probably have a lot of a back kick. And I'll see that a lot in people who sink their hips and roll their shoulders back. And this is something I had issues with as well and I had to work on. So you don't want your legs running way back here. When people see like a big open stride, sometimes they're like, oh my God, look at that big, beautiful, open, long stride. That's not necessarily always what you want. But again, whatever works for you, whatever works for your body, okay? So that's what we're looking for. You know, in general, we just want like a nice cycling motion when we're running. <clears throat> and it's nice and fluid, you know, get your high knees pumping, generating power. Someone asked me about, um, are you pushing into the ground or are you letting gravity bring your, bring your legs back down? <clears throat> kind of depends on the phases of the race. I personally never think you should be pounding into the ground because it's kind of wasting energy. What are you pushing into right here? Nothing, it's air, right? So when, when you get on the ground, I kind of think of pumping more like a piston than I think of pushing, okay? So it's, that's just kind of a weird question. And here's another thing to keep in mind, guys. We've been running as human beings since we started existing on the planet, okay? Since we like evolved into humans. So running is thousands and thousands of years old. It shouldn't be something that's really that difficult for you. You should have a good natural running form stride just because we're human beings, okay? So I know that's a little bit deep, but it's, it's not rocket science. I've seen coaches try to take athletes and make them all look exactly the same and turn people into robots and you can see them thinking about every single mechanic that they're doing and that's not how you're going to run your fastest races. Me personally and depending on what, if you're a 100 meter runner it's going to be a little different. Yes, those mechanics are very important in that race. The 200 it becomes a little bit more loose. The 400 is more about your efficiency and your stride and, and how well you're using your energy and stuff like that and what works for you, okay? So you have to take all these techniques and you have to practice them and practice and which we're going to do in a second here when I show you the drills and you practice them over and over and over again and then eventually they start to carry over into your races but it shouldn't be something where you're going into a race thinking relax my shoulders keep my jaw loose bring my knees up get a good heel, rec heel recovery and all that kind of stuff no when you get into a race you just run and you just compete and so hopefully eventually after weeks and months and years of practicing stuff correctly, it starts to translate over into your races, okay? So there is no like quick fixes, there is no like do this and you'll run perfectly and run fast times in a day. Race plans can do that kind of stuff, <clears throat> but running form takes time, okay? So <clears throat> I hope that helps shed some light into what running form is, the correct kind of running form that you should be shooting for, and those are kind of cues that you should be aiming for when you're running, okay? So now we're gonna go and show you some running drills that will help reinforce these different things that we're talking about. So um, the full workout will be in the description below so you can follow along and I'll see you in just one minute. Okay, so I'm gonna show you guys a couple of drills that are one of my favorite, these are like basically my favorite drills to help reinforce the form that we're talking about. So the first drill is called nutcrackers or ankle pops, whatever you wanna call them. Basically all we're doing is working on dorsiflex so we're keeping our, we want to keep our feet dorsiflex and we're going to keep our legs pretty much straight and we're just going to be popping off our toes. We're not trying to do this fast or anything like that. And the other thing is we're keeping our upper body nice and relaxed and we're keeping our arms and everything um, back and forth, keeping everything straight, straight forward and back, okay? So relaxed shoulders, relaxed face and we're just popping off the ankles, okay? So it should look something like this. So the next one we're gonna be doing is called A skip. And these are, in my opinion, the two most important drills you can do. You have to learn how to do A skips correctly and B skips correctly. They're very similar, but there are some important differences. So first is an A skip. Basically, all it is is a skip with perfect form, okay? So you're just coming up, you want your leg at about 90 degree, you want your toe dorsiflex, you wanna keep your hips up high, and then same thing, relax shoulders, everything going forward and back, relaxed face, okay? If you want a slight forward lean, that's fine. Try not to get leaning backwards. Try not to let your hips sink, okay? A skip is what it looks like. Coming back. 
back. So that was A skip. B skip is basically the same thing, except instead of having no recovery at the bottom, we're gonna add an active strike. So this is the one that people just can't seem to get down. It takes a lot of time. It took me some time too. So all we're doing is when we come up to here, now we're just active striking. Just be careful that you're not reaching out and you're not striking back behind you. The point of this drill is to learn how to let your legs cycle correctly bring your heel up into your butt and, and land underneath you. So I have my athletes practice it standing and you should hear that right there. And it should be landing right underneath you, okay? So take some time, but get used to this. Get good at this drill because this will translate directly into your running. You'll start putting your foot down correctly. You'll start cycling through a lot better. It'll increase your turnover and it'll make you more efficient, okay? So this is what it looks like. Correctly, there should be a nice little rhythm to it, okay? That's what running is. Running is rhythm, okay? Okay, so the last one is a combination of high knees and butt kickers. Um, in high school, we used to do butt kickers like this with our heels down. This is not a position that we're ever gonna be in when we run. We should never be doing this. This doesn't help us do anything, really. I don't even know what that is. So high knees are pretty much exactly the same as butt kickers. They shouldn't look any different. And all that's teaching us how to do is bring our heel up into our butt, right? And it's gonna keep you from overstriding and letting it come back here and put a, a lot of strain on your hamstring and put you in a position where you're pulling to generate power instead of here where you're pushing to generate power. That's what we wanna do when we run. We wanna push to generate power. We don't wanna pull through to generate power. Our hamstring's about one third the strength of our quads. So we wanna use our quads and let these be a recovery muscle, okay? So this is what it looks like. Oh, make sure you're staying upright. Same thing with your arms. All these drills are the same exact cues, okay? And those are the same cues that we want to carry over into our running, okay? So it looks like this. Nice and relaxed in my face. You need to learn how to generate force and energy without using a ton of effort, okay? Okay, so those are four of my favorite drills that you need to be doing a couple times a week. We used to do it on our tech days, which would be a Tuesday, Thursday. After our warm up, we would go through all of these drills, take our time, and then we would do some striders to kind of tie it all together, okay? So right after you're done doing these drills and thinking about these different things, the relaxed arms, the dorsiflex, the um, high knee lift action, keeping your uh, heel recovery nice and tight, then we take that and we go straight to some striders which is basically just a glorified, like perfect run technique kind of thing, okay? So all we're gonna be doing is reinforcing everything that we just did and practiced and talked about, and then trying to let it carry over. This is the time that you wanna be thinking about relaxed arms and thinking about all those cues, not when you're running a race, okay? So just that's why you just practice it over and over and over again, and eventually it gets ingrained into your muscle memory, and then you start doing it without thinking about it, okay? That's why practice is so important. That's why you say practice makes perfect. All right, so this is what it looks like. All right, so first off, my form is not perfect. It never was perfect, and it's never gonna be perfect. My coaches in high school and in college used to yell at me all the time about using my arms more, not letting my legs go back behind me, not overstriding, not getting side to side. I, I always worked on it, but for me, when it came to race time, especially running a 400, 400 hurdles, 
it was all about efficiency. And so for me, keeping my arms nice and tight and swinging like this, that's just what felt best to me, okay? Doesn't mean it's right or wrong. Well, it is wrong, but that's just what felt best to me. So <clears throat> take this kind of stuff, try to incorporate it into your running form, try to make your running form better, improve parts that you need to work on. But don't be crazy about running form. It's not about running with perfect form. It's about running races fast and enjoying yourself, okay? And doing whatever works best for your body, how your body's put together, what feels best to you, what allows you to enjoy running, okay? So that's what it's all about. It's not about being a robot on the track and trying to run with perfect form every single step and all that crap. Just run, do what works best for you, okay? But if you take these techniques and you apply them to whatever sport you're in, soccer, basketball, baseball, track, it will help you run faster. It'll help you run more efficiently and it'll keep you from getting injured, okay? So I hope that helps, guys. Leave comments below if you have comments. Hit that like button. Make sure you subscribe. That really helps us out and I appreciate all the people who have been. If you wanna see certain videos, if you have questions, let me know, let us know. We'll make sure to make that happen for you guys. I love making these videos for you. I love the little community that we've built together and uh, I wanna just continue to keep doing it and helping you guys out. So I hope this was enjoyable and until next time, stay fast my friends. It's crazy sometimes they